on the Rick Grubbs and I'm Dan Charis. David Ortiz for two more years? I don't get it. Pardon the Rick Grubbs and I'm Jared Ray. I couldn't agree with you more. That, that seems a little outrageous. 37 years old. The guy was hurt yeah. for the whole second half of last season. He's like three years younger than my dad. That's sad. So my dad's a young guy. Recording Bye on work. Monday. And PTR is a big deal, but obviously tomorrow, presidential election. I can de- We can debate wh- which one's more important. I would say PTR, but if you want to get involved in the debate, whether you're watching it now, whether you're watching it on Blip.TV later on in the week, hashtag it on Twitter, the Great Larry Bird Jersey 33. Tell them what that's all about. Uh, it's just a little lyric from the uh, great song from Blake Funky, One Summer Girls. So if you want to join in the debate, hashtag your thoughts with that. Let's. With that said, let's get right, let's get right into it. All right, all right, here we go. First topic of the day. Back with the election talk. Yeah. Do you like when political figures talk sports? No, I don't. Because here's the thing. I'm a, I consider myself, a, at a small level, a sports figure. And I don't talk about politics because I don't know anything about it. I don't know uh, what these big issues on energy are. I don't know what the big issues on the Middle East are. I, I don't know those things. And... I don't study to know those things. So I don't want to see politics come out and try and talk about who's going to win March Madness. Least favorite part about March Madness, President Obama filling out his bracket. Who cares? He's usually wrong. The, the, and he usually picks scra- all, like, all the scratch guys. He loves North picks Carolina. The, ones. the stupidest one about it is the woman's bracket. Yeah. Clearly, you don't watch any women's games at and all. The woman's bracket, no offense, all the one seeds make it yes. to at least the Elite Eight. And then... If anything, it loses to the two seed. seed. Yes, like so you're not true. seeing any eleven seeds in a women's game making <laughs> it to the final four. It just doesn't happen. Yes, politics and even he writes in all caps too. By the way, and I'll even Obama. go microcosm here. If we're in class, we're in any sort of political science class or something like that. You're a political science major, blah blah blah. Don't talk about sports. So I don't want to hear it because you're making a fool out of yourself. I'll talk sports. You listen, agree, shake your head, smile, even if you disagree. Politics. I'll do the same for you. If you're not a sports guy, don't talk sports. I'm not a politics guy. Okay. Won't talk politics. The, the only p- political thing that I could say that I don't hate is when, uh, like, presidents go out for a ticket. It's like, all right, yeah, okay. all right. Not, not and as when they wi- visit the White House, okay, I'm all right with that. All right, yes, true, true. But when political figures talk about sports, yeah, absolutely terrible. They don't know names. It's just like, get yeah. these guys out of here. Yeah. Who was it that said Mike McGuire and Sammy Sousa? I think that was John Kerry. Buddy, you're an idiot. Yeah. And then, I will then say this is great. Barack Obama, supposed huge Chicago fan, huge White Sox fan, gets in the booth at the Nationals game. Hey, President, who was your favorite White Sox growing up? I was actually a uh, Oakland A's fan growing up. <laughs> You're an idiot. You were not an Oakland A's fan. You're probably not a White Sox fan. So it's just terrible. And then you, when you get Thomas Menino in it, the mayor of Boston. Oh, yeah. Mumble. Uh, no idea who any of the guys' names are. Veritech split in the uprights. Wes Weckler. Wes Weckler. <laughs> I will Grabowski, say, though, Grabowski. You know Grabowski? I did not Gronkowski hear Gronkowski is Grabowski. Oh. I, w- I will great. say this, though. I heard Condoleezza Rice. I've heard her talk about some of her favorite teams. She's a huge Cleveland Browns fan. So I, I'll believe her there because it's not like if you're a political figure, you're not going to go and say, I'm a huge Cleveland Browns fan. I'm a fan of the worst franchise maybe in the NFL history. Like So at least you know she's somewhat of a diehard fan. Like if she came out and said, oh, I'm a fan of like, well, I don't know, like the Yankees. All right, you're not really a fan. But the Browns. Okay, she's yep. a fan of the Browns. I'm gonna believe her there. Okay. Also a Stanford fan, so. But she probably went to Stanford. She probably she went super duper smart. She did. I think she went to school with David Shaw. I think that's another interesting little thing. Head coach went on to Stanford. Yeah, I did know that. Well, thanks for telling me. Yeah. All right, next topic. That was a long one. Yeah, we, we went long. We Politics, don't like political figures get talking sports. Here. Get, get out of here. Okay. So now we got to go to some NFL stuff. A few weeks ago, we did an NFL preview. Midway through the year now, eight weeks in, let's hand out our midseason awards, which are probably going to be different than they were in Matt the Matt Stafford is not my NFL MVP. And Jay Cutler is not my MVP. Uh, so I'm going to go offensive rookie of the year. First off, Doug Martin. Guy yeah. threw up a 55 spot last yeah. night in fantasy. No, he's been excellent. Um, defensive rookie of the year is slipping my mind right now. I can't think of anybody. The whole Bears defense deserves to get defensive player of the year. Yeah. That team is yeah, on my yeah. fantasy team. Gets a pick six They're, every week. They probably score more than their offense does. I know last week they had, finally, they had a big out, outburst, and Brandon Marks had some touchdowns, Jay Cutler too, but their defense scores a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know who to hand out my MVP to. I mean, people like Peyton Manning, but I'm sick of Peyton Manning getting MVPs of work, MVP awards. So, I'm probably going to go... I'm, I'm going to go Heisman Trophy. Best team, best quarterback, 
Oh, the, the quarterback on the Bears team, Matt Ryan, Matty Heisen. <laughs> That's what I like to call him back in his DC days. Okay. You know, eight and zero has his team rolling. A few comeback, a few comeback victories. Win on win at home, win on the road. That's what happens when you're in the Superdome. Uh, you know, that's where I'm going with my NFL awards, and then obviously JJ Watt could also yeah. be defensive player of the year. Yeah. I'm uh, glad it's still not one here. I know I agree 100 percent there with defensive player of the year. JJ Watt by far and away affects the game more than any defensive player. Though defensive rookie of the year, you can argue Chandler Jones could win that. He's been excellent this year for the past. He has like two plays a game where it's just like, wow, this guy is but they're, great. Yeah, and, and then he's still really raw. He's going to be a really good player in like three seasons from now. He could be. The best pass rusher in the league, which That'll would be, be nice. Cool. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. So I gave my our deep uh, offensive rookie of the year. I'm gonna go with Doug Martin as well. If he continues even half of what he's been doing the last two weeks, that's still like 100 yards and a touchdown every week. He's been excellent. He looks like he could be the next big running back in the NFL. Running backs, running backs are like I think every, come and go. He'll yeah, have, like four years. He'll have four years. Like it won't be a 10 year yeah. thing. Um. Coach of the year. Yeah, I was gonna think of a coach of the year. I gotta I think like, about that. I, I can't decide. Like, imagine if the coach of the year was like the interim coach of the Colts. Yeah, uh, Bruce Arians. Thank you. MVP. I'm going way out on a limb here, but we're looking at it, the worst team in the NFL last year. Now they're five and three. They can make the playoffs. I'll talk about this a little more. Andrew Luck as the MVP of the National Football League. Well, as remember, many remember. passing yards right now as as Denver uh, as a. Uh, Denver, I was going to call him Denver Manning. <laughs> Peyton Manning. As many wins as Denver. They're 5-3 and three now. Their schedule but from here on in looks pretty good. Uh, I'll well, touch upon that later. South, but remember, the Colts are throwing games last year, so you can't really balance that out. And w- we can talk, but the thing is, if you're throwing games, yeah, which I don't think they were, I think they were. but now they're 5-3 and three and they're probably going to make the playoffs and they're probably going to win a Super probably Bowl in the next the five years. Uh, look, how the a- you're not getting two teams out of the AFC East. You're not getting two teams out of the AFC West. You're going to get Denver, New England. You're going to get Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Colts are the th- they're the eight, they're the sixth best team in the AFC. Uh, you know, they're the okay. sixth best team. Okay, maybe they will make the playoffs. They still that's, have games against the Jags. Football. They play the Jags, I understand Titans, the AFC and Bills. South Bulls. I Jags, Titans, I got Bills, three wins, eight and eight. They're in. That would be awful. If they, and they would more. I would love for them to play the Colts in the playoffs because everyone in the media's head would the, just you mean explode. The you yeah, mean the, the Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos. Their everyone's heads would explode. It would be. And a love fest for this great oh, yeah. match. Um, probably the most, probably one of the highest rated games of the year if it happens. Well, I mean, it'll be f- the playoffs will be the highest game of the year anyway. Up until that point, you know, it'll be like it would still be huge. It'll the be the huge. only game that possibly that won't happen, but the only game that I think could be higher rating that is more uh, Broncos Patriots. No, I think I think a Colts Redskins Super Bowl if it happened, which is not going to happen, obviously. But two rookies, these guys are always going to be compared against each other. They've both been great. Which we're going to talk about these guys in the next topic, but if they made it to the Super Bowl, how about Dolphins somehow? Dolphins skins, no. two rookie quarterbacks. Not as because it's not right, luck. Right, it's right, not right. luck. RG three. These guys. I'm just throwing. A, I'm just throwing yeah. a curveball at you in, in the attack. You people, hit, you hit it out. People's heads would explode. They're going to explode because if it happens, Colts in the playoffs. Okay. Oh, I thought we thought we, they were going to be a three win team. All right, so we're halfway through the. Uh, actually, going into week ten, which is absolutely terrible. This season's yeah. going by way too Flying. fast. But if you got to pick Luck or RG3, Robert Griffin the third, or Andrew Luck, who are you going with? This is tough because early sta- portion of the year, RG3 looked excellent. Still looked good the last few weeks. They've lost some games, but he's a rookie. He's going to struggle. Luck, at first, sp- struggled against the Bears, but now we look at the Bears' D, and they're excellent. So maybe that's – and he still threw for 300, y- 300 yards in that game. Had four interceptions, I think, and a touchdown, but they're great. Back and forth – I don't know who in in five years. I think you're looking at guys who, wh- at the end of their careers, we could have two guys taken in the same draft, one two, who have two Super Bowls apiece, who have multiple MVPs apiece, who lead the league in passing. Mo- they split it between each other. We, I mean, these two. This might be the best quarterback draft. A- and I know the draft with Manning and Roethlisberger is considered is great as well. And then the Marino Kelly draft, all those guys, Elway. But we're talking about two guys at the top of the draft who are going to be superstars. Superstars in the league for years to come. Okay. So if, if you put a gun in my head, tell me who am I taking, i got to go with Luck because he's got his team at 5-3. and There three you go. There's, and there's my the answer right there. Andrew Luck is who I would take right now. 5-3. and three. You, you got the winning record. And yeah. then, like you said, he could go lead the team to an 8-8 eight eight playoff like After being run. awful. Yeah, but Griffin the third. I mean, if you want to go him, I mean, if you have your fantasy team, he's you still clearly want him. 
you clearly want Griffin to be a fantasy team. I got him on my team right now. Clearly way better than Cam Newton, who's absolutely terrible. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely terrible. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going luck, just straight straight winner. I think right now. Winner right now over Griffin. Like I said, if you look at it, it's not like any – I don't think anyone – looking in on the NFL saying, I don't think either of those guys will ever win a Super Bowl. I think right now the consensus is those two guys are Super Bowl caliber quarterbacks. Gotcha. All right, what's our next topic? All the rookies have been great, too. Okay, we got Patriots making a move. <laughs> Pat's making a move. Here, I right at the, that mug shot right, right at the trade deadline. They go in for Tampa Bay's suspended quarterback, Aqib Tlaib, out of Kansas. Checkered pass, to say the least. Was it a good move? Fourth round pick this year is what we gave up for him. You know what? I think it was a good move. I mean, the guy, checkered pass is, is clearly what that's you don't want to say. That's an yes. understatement, clear clearly. Clear understatement there. But if the guy can cover, he's clearly already the best cornerback on the team. If McCourty he has a pulse, is now at safety, which is actually a good decent move. move. And then Sterling Moore, I don't even know if he's starting now, but he gets in the Cut. game. Yeah, he's, he's not great. Um, and then, like, Raza Dowling, that guy's on the IR, I yep. think, again. So, like, the cornerback situation on this team. Arrington's been pretty terrible. He gets burned at least once a week now. Pretty bad. So, good move. This is the first – this won't be the last time you're going to see a trade between the Bill Belichick-led Patriots and the Greg Schiano-led Bucks. They love each other. Love yeah. each other. Oh, absolutely. Did you see the fo- on, on a football wife when Belichick was in the meeting room had a Rutgers, yep. like – Polo on. I think his son went to Rutgers. His son too, like might have played like as his a long but, snapper. And I, don't like, know if, I know he tried Chia- out. I don't know if he made it. Chiano had him as a grad assistant too, like as a favor to Bill. So yeah. they those two are good friends. Obviously, Bill's a Jersey rocker. He loves uh, he loves Bon Jovi. He just loves Jersey. So obviously, yes. he's a big Rutgers guy. He also loves Aerosmith. Well, I don't know if he loves him, but I know Bob Kraft does. The Aqib Talib move for the Pats is, is really interesting. This is another one of those checkered pass. Red flag character guys who see, Bill is taking see, I in. I hate when people say no. The Patriots won't, Patriots won't trade them because he's had a, he has a. They, we do it a lot. Corey Dillon, Albert Hainsworth, and it, it, sometimes it works. Corey Dillon, Randy Moss. Sometimes it doesn't. Albert Hainsworth, Ocho Cinco. So let's find. Uh, it's going to be a wait and see game. He hasn't played at all this year. Still has to sit out another game next week. He'll come back when the Pats play the Colts, uh, which Ooh. is a stiff test to and come. The Colts in. have a bye week going into that. Yeah, you got to play Andrew Luck week one. Uh, I want to see what he's all about. I mean, this is a guy who got in a fight after practice in Tampa Bay. He got in a fight in college. Fight, took his helmet off and, and same, used it as a sure weapon. the same deal went down so, in college. Look, and, and a guy like that, when you bring in Corey Dillon and Randy Moss, you're putting them in the offense. There's a lot of good guys. People aren't making mistakes around him. He's going to come into that secondary, and guys are going to make mistakes, and he's going to get angry at guys. I don't know if I – I think a, a talent-wise, 17 interceptions in four years. That's better than anyone we've ever had at, at cornerback, well, except Ty Wall. Had Ty, ten, Ty ten Wall, picks Asante one Samuel. But great talent, but I, I think he's going to cause some problems. I don't think Bill can turn this guy around. He, he's a blockhead. He is an idiot. No offense, Akeem. Guy's dumb. Now, if he has four interceptions the end of the year, I'm, gonna pr- I'm obviously going to heap praise on him. Yeah. And if our secondary is great, I'll heap praise. But right now, poor move. I'd rather keep that fourth rounder, even though we'd waste it on a cornerback who would end up being like Jonathan Wilhite. But yes. You never yeah, know. Good so point. That's a good point. Not a big Aqib Talib guy. Okay. So I think he's great. I think he's talented. Played for Mark Mangino in Kansas. Mark Mangino. Very good. All right, so uh, we, we went over this in our, in our preseason edition, yep. the NFL preview PPR. But we're back halfway through the season. Who are you picking for your Super Bowl? I picked Houston. I picked Chicago. Shakier on Houston now. Chicago, still feeling great. Their offense, not awesome. Defense, though, is good enough. Remember, they made it to the Super Bowl a few years back with Rex <coughs> Grossman at quarterback. Well, the NFC also is awful that year. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think the NFC is that great this year. The AFC is awful. The AFC is pretty bad. The NFC, okay, Green Bay's playing better. San Fran. Green Bay should be 6-2 and two right now. Green Bay's, uh, Green Bay's good, but I think Chicago's good enough to beat them. San Fran. Good, but they're not great offensively. Oh, yeah, Al yeah. Smith will turn the ball over if they the play. The Giants are, are, are a team. You Giants, look Giants up for. are tough when they make it. Obviously, if they get into the playoffs, mm. they're tough to beat. So awful. I don't know the Giants get in the playoffs and making the Super Bowl is awful. I like where Chicago is. If Jay Cutler can continue to play well, play better. Brandon Marshall's been excellent this year at wide receiver. Thank you for twenty nine points yesterday in fantasy. He had thirty in my Yahoo League, thirty point two in uh, in the AFC. Houston, they started out. They looked great. I was feeling excellent about that pick. Struggled a little bit, still feel good about them making a deep playoff run. But obviously, I think I, I think the Pats are lurking. I don't know if they'll make Slow it all the way there. 
kids going home homerism but all the way. Denver. Peyton Manning, each and every week, is getting better and better. Eric Decker's getting better by the week. Demarius Thomas is getting better. The defense is playing well. Denver is a team that I don't want to play in the playoffs. I'll tell you that right now. I know we beat them barely. Yep. I don't want to play Denver. I think Denver can make a, a serious run. Sayer Benninger would love that. Uh, it'd just be uh, spice lattes oh, it'd be, all day. It'd be all, all year. spice lattes for everyone. <laughs> so uh, my preseason prediction was it was the third time in four years I predicted the Super Bowl, and it has yet to happen. Out of the NFC, I got the Falcons. Look okay. at those guys. Yeah, they look good. <clears throat> out of the NFC, Patriots. Yeah. I am a Patriots fan, and I sort of beefed over them a little bit. I'm sticking with them. Patriots, yep. look, I think they I think they have a very good chance of going 12-4, and four, yep. which would get them a bye. They probably have to go on the road and maybe face maybe face Baltimore or, or, te- or the Texans. So that's a big game coming up when they yeah. have to face the Texans in like week 14. NFC, I know Matt Ryan hasn't won a playoff game. I know Mike Smith hasn't won a playoff game. He's sort of on the hot seat because he's built him up to be a playoff team, but yep. can't get him at any further than that. But you know what? I like what I see out of the, the, this team right now. The Falcons, I'm sticking with them, and I'm sticking with the Patriots. I just, what do you know? I had a good feeling about them it, before the season. I'm going to stick with them. I so mean, it, 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 it really could be like, they're, they're both going to be in the playoffs those two yep. teams. But, I mean, you just mentioned a ton of teams that could, could uh, sneak in. So there. the both of us, I think the both of us are standing firm with our preseason yeah. picks. It's not like any of those four teams have been off Very different year. from our NFL MVP picks. Oh, yeah, our NFL MVP picks were just a shame. I felt very good picking Matthew Stafford, but... He has been... He might be the... W- out of all the good quarterbacks from last year, he's obviously been the worst. Yeah. He's played better the last few weeks, and as a team, they've played better, but... Yeah, okay. It, it doesn't help that Calvin Johnson's getting hit by the Madden curse. Okay. So we had this discussion... Uh, on Saturday night, who's got what and who's got the best tradition in college football? So many great traditions. Yes, Look at Tyler. Like dotting the I. Yes. The, the Ohio State band. I mean, I love when Clemson runs down after yep. touching Howard Rock. Runs yep. down the hill. They don't yep. come out of a tunnel. No, they don't come out jamming. of smoke. They are they're cruising jamming. down that hill. Chief Osceola in Florida yes. State. Just great traditions all the way around. Boom, but boomer Sooner, the Sooner rocking, another yep. great one. But my, my favorite tradition, you see it on screen. The running of Ralphie the Buffalo. Oh, yeah. I know Colorado is probably the worst BCS they're school awful. right now. They're getting manhandled. They're, they're pretty much forty-five point underdogs every week. Every week I look at, I look. I'm like, all right, who's the biggest underdog this week? Happened to be Colorado two weeks ago against Oregon. This week I think they played Stanford. Yes, and they got smashed. Yes, same same deal. Like forty-five point underdogs got smashed again. But the running of Ralphie the Buffalo. Look, you have a live buffalo and you got two guys holding it, and you're just running full speed onto the field. Okay. How great is that? It, it's a, a full on buffalo. Okay. It's alright. Two guys. It's alright. Running full speed. It's alright. It's great. Best tradition in college football. Here's the difference between your tradition and my tradition. You have the two guys <laughs> running with Ralphie. That, you know, I, I think he has points, so maybe get more than that. I've seen where there's. Uh, Somebody there's could get guys. trampled easily. But the best tradition for me, for my money, got to go SEC, got to go down to Arkansas, call the hogs, swoop, pig, suey. Everyone's doing that after scores. Pre game, everyone's calling the hogs. Great atmosphere. It doesn't matter how old you are. You could be 85 year old. Your grandmother could be calling the hogs. Everyone gets into it. It's loud. It, it creates a great atmosphere. Everyone's having fun with it. I even had, the best tradition in the I had, conference. I had fun. I think it is. I think it's the best in the country easily. Got to call the hogs. Hundred times out of hundred, best tradition. War Eagle. Great tradition. No. That's actually a terrible tradition. Yeah, I don't awful. understand War Eagle at all. But better tradition, the Ole Miss tailgate. According to Nick Fairley, Professor War some hundred years, had it literally owned an eagle and it got off of its perch pregame and like flew you're around a tiger. the stadium. Why are you doing war that's, eagle? That's how it started. Some professor's eagle got off its perch and now flew the around SEC the stadium. Now the SEC has three schools that are nicknamed the Tigers. Yeah. And two Bulldogs. Not a lot of creativity down south. Nah. A little bit of inbreeding, but we'll, we won't go that way. No one from the South is Boston anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Gotcha. Okay, you go. All right, so uh, college football, another college football sort of tradition-esque topic right here. Best end zone team in college football. I mean, if you play NCAA football, it's great when you go to the bowl games and you get the actual end zone paint in the video game, but when you go to, like, a BCS game, they've got some stupid paint, and it's yep. like Notre Dame. Like, okay. So you, you clearly know Notre Dame won't be having the end zone paint with Notre Dame in it. Best end zone paint, yeah, they have the stupid, the stupid slashes, white lines. The slashes, that they're not stupid. It's they're idiotic. full of tradition. It's idiotic. Just the... Yeah, idiotic is the word I would describe just about everything around Notre Dame. At you this despise point. Notre Dame. Oh, I hate them. I hate them. I I had to watch that highlight of them coming back and winning that game. Almost threw up after seeing it like a third time. Anyways, uh, best end zone paint. 
sought this weekend. Sticking with the SEC, why? Because the SEC is the best of football. They have the best atmospheres, best stadium, best crowds, best everything. It's that simple. Uh, even though they're not there, I mean, they may not be as good as everyone makes them out to be, but still. They really aren't as good as everyone makes them out to best be. They got like five teams in the top ten all season long. Best end zone paint, Death Valley, LSU. You got the purple on one side, LSU. The end zone's purple. The letters are. I got you. I know what you're and talking then about. And the other end zone, yellow, purple LSU. Simple, awesome. Two different colors. You get your yellow fans over here. They're wearing yellow stuff. You get your purple fans over here. They're Is wearing that really purple. How it works? I think we'll have to see. I'm not sure. I don't think it's the full half, but I think behind those end zones, they're right, trying right, to encourage right, people right, to wear I, those I can colors. Understand. I can understand. That's where you're pretty from. awesome. LSU. That was a great atmosphere. I like that end zone paint. Not gonna lie, we got the Hail State picture. Like the hashtag Hail State. Like the hashtag not, Snow Bowl 12. I'm not a fan of those hashtag Mississippi State things that they've got going on right now. Oh, also another one, Tennessee, the checkers. You just stole my oh, favorite sorry. end zone paint my right bad. there. My I was bad. sticking in the SEC right there. The checker end zone paint for Tennessee, just great. Just awesome. great. Uh, I remember watching a, uh, a, do a documentary or just some show about Tennessee football inside the life, and they showed the ground crew working on that. And they had like the whole measurements going yeah. on. It was like two feet by two feet all across. I mean, yep. they leave two feet in the back. It's actually yep. yards. Yep. Uh, something, something that has to do with the yards. It's great though. I, I just can't get enough. Checkered end zone. Like, d don't even put Tennessee in there. Yep. It's great because it's you white. Know. It's white. You got the green. You got the green grass outline, and then you got the white, and you got that Tennessee orange. What's that orange called? Um, it's a weird orange. Volunteer. I think it's volunteer. Volunteer orange. orange. I think it's just what they call it. I will give you this though. That's my favorite, and it's it's a shame that the basketball court did away with that, and now yeah. it says Tennessee behind there. They used to have the checker also at the basketball court, but I will give you this LSU. I love the 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 fifty yard line paint. The oh yeah, the eye, eye. Yeah. Great, great look. That's right pretty there. awesome. Uh, again, Notre Dame, those stripes. Off, I'll get rid of those. Notre Dame, keep his stripes. God, I want the Notre Dame game so badly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So NBA season has started. Couple games in, who's winning the NBA title for you? This could be the most predictable topic we've ever had on PTR. You know, you might go different just to be different. I'm gonna go Miami Heat just because look, they killed the Celtics the first game. I know it's the first game of the season, we don't care about it, like come come playoffs. Come out again tomorrow or uh, the other night. Chris Bosch drops forty. Ray on yep. it's a game winner, obviously. LeBron James has like a triple double. Miami Heat, nope. The, the Celtics won't be able to stop them. I can't believe they almost came. They had a 3-2 to two lead against the Heat last year. I can't believe it. I mean, Bosch yeah. did sit out like a lot of that series, yep. but still. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say Lake. I was going to say they were going to beat the Lakers. The Lakers, the Lakers are awesome. The Lakers are terrible now. It's great. Right now, it looks like, even with the Thunder getting rid of James Harden in that trade, it still looks like it's going to be yeah. Heat Thunder, uh, which isn't great for the NBA in all it's, honesty. It's decent, but it, it's decent because you got the Durant-LeBron rivalry. But it's pretty much going to be one-sided to LeBron. I mean, I think it, two of the next three years, it's going to be Heat Thunder. And I think the Heat are going to win both times that anything happens. Yeah, I, I think the Heat obviously have to be the favorites. They won it last year. They didn't lose anyone. They got better by adding Ray Allen. Even if he plays limited minutes throughout the year, he's still going to knock down some big shots for you. And, and then out west, the Thunder, probably the best team. So I'm really – and I don't think the Timberwolves are good enough to make it to the finals. I think they could have a really good year and make a legitimate playoff run. They have some good players. Derek Williams, Kevin Love, uh, Kevin Love comes back. Andre Kirilenko, Ricky Rubio's got to come back. Brandon they Roy out of retirement. Barea. Yeah, so they have some guys who can play some basketball up in Minnesota. I, th I think they could be a solid team. Brooklyn Nets, New York Knicks could also be pretty solid. Two they're both going to suck, trust me. Uh, I disagree with you strongly there. The Knicks already 2-0. They're, no. they're both going to lose in the first round of the playoffs. Well, they'll still make the playoffs. How hard is that? If you don't make the playoffs, yeah. they stink. Uh, still two pretty good teams. I think the Nets will finish ahead of the Heat easily. Nobody cares about the regular season. I think Haven't the, you learned uh, that? They're, be they're a better team than the Heat. They're going to make a deeper run than the Celtics. Not a chance. Easily. Not but a chance. A way better team. No. I can I couldn't disagree. I don't think the Seas are a good team whatsoever. Seas are decent. Your 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 team is built on Paul Pierce, aging aging star, and you're built on Kevin Why Durant, aging my star. Team, Logan? I, I no, I'm just saying the team in general. The Seas right, in right. general. Built on two aging stars. In, in comparison, the Nets, Brooke Lopez, killer up front, Gerald Wallace. Built on two aging stars. Marshawn Brooks, built Joe Johnson. Right, don't give me Darren Marshawn Williams. Brooks. That guy's like Joe Johnson starts at the shooting guard, so he's going to light it up. You got, you got Brooke oh, Lopez down low. Light it up. Humphreys pulling down rebounds. Gerald Wallace. You got Darren Williams distributing. I don't see how that's not a great team. Rajon Rondo is better than Deron Williams. I, oh, my. I can't. Deron Williams overall better, but for their team, Rajon Rondo. 
But Williams has way better players around him. Way better. Not a chance. Absolutely. It's absolutely no argument. Joe Johnson versus Paul Pierce. Want, I'm taking Paul Pierce you want, every day. You want KG or Brooke, Lo- Brooke Lopez? KG. No, you don't. I'm taking Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez doesn't rebound. He had 27 points. That's why you Chris Humphrey. Humphrey's pulls down your boards. Oh, thanks. Same. You got Chris Humphrey. Double-digit rebounder. He is. Get out of town. The Nets are a good basketball team. They got Avery Johnson as their head coach, though. Next stop. That doesn't really mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. He's decent. Yeah. Next Sorry, topic. Avery. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're doing the topic. So what do you make of the Celtics' slow start? They started 0-2. Um, it's whatever. I mean, it's whatever. Yep. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to pay attention wholeheartedly into the playoffs. And when the playoffs come, you know what? They're going to go seven-game series again in the first round against whoever they play. Seven games, they're going to win. Next next matchup, depending on who they play, if they have the Heat, they're going to lose. If they have another team, they'll probably win in seven games. Then I'm playing the Heat, probably losing five. This game, the whole Celtics season in like 25 seconds. Here's my... They're going to have a lot of... They're, they're going to have some injury problems in there. I'll, I'll mix that in there. I, I agree with you in the sense that it's an 82-game season. We've played two games so far. We're only Three two. games. Three, Three games, games. One and two. One and two. You, you Last time the I Wizards, checked. which is, should be the worst yeah. team in the East by like two. So, anyways, we're, we're one and two right now, 82-game season. But here's my thing. I, I can't get excited for any regular season basketball game. They're just not exciting. And then you get to the playoffs, and that takes about six months just to finish the playoffs. You can't get excited about that. Michael Felger brought it up last year. I think it would be really interesting and intriguing if basketball switched over to, like maybe you play each team three or four times throughout the year, maybe two or three times, and then you go like soccer. No playoffs. There's just a big league table. You get points for a win, points for if you tie. That makes every game actually interesting because I don't care about a Tuesday night game on December 8th with the C's playing the Nets. I really don't care about that. But if that game, three points on the line, your season is kind of decided by that, that brings a little bit of intrigue. And then you don't have this 85 months. what happens if it goes to overtime, though? You just you go that one point. You finish out the game, play the game in overtime so the fans So you get like happy. two points if you win overtime you and, then, and then one if you lose yeah. overtime? I, I There's lo- not a I lot think, of overtime games. Though. I think this it, it's interesting. Makes the regular season interesting. I, I and then feel you. I feel you. You get that two year. It seems like the first three months of summer is just a, like a LeBron James love fest. Is he gonna win a playoff game? Is he gonna win a title? All this, all this stuff. Who cares? Like there was a two week stretch where the Heat were playing the Indiana Pacers, and we were trying to create stories out of the Indiana Pacers and Miami Heat. Pacers. Who cares? I like where your head's at on that. I mean, I wouldn't mind that because I'm, Makes not, it I'm not a gigantic NBA fan. But the ABA tried this like five years ago. You got a point for each quarter that you were winning. That's weird. And then you get two for the win. So you could technically win the first three yeah. quarters and then win the game and you'd still pretty much lose because they're based like off that. points. That's sort stupid. of nasty. Very, very nasty. Just wins, wins, losses, ties, points, points. There's up. not a lot of, there's not ties. There's, there's not a lot of overtime games in the NBA. They yeah. change it like every year. So you go three for a win, you get none if you lose, and one if you if you're going to OT or whatever. You All can right. figure it All out right. that way All and right. balance I it out. I see where your head's at. I like that. Gotcha. NBA, try it. New commissioner. Yes, when the new commissioner gets in there, maybe we should suggest a change. Okay, the next topic right here. Both Brick teams, if you missed it, they had the Battle of Providence going on this weekend, the men's and the women's. Both teams lost predictably because Rick is D3 compared to Providence, which is D1. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? What impressed you and what did not impress you? Well, uh, first off, it's great that both these teams get an opportunity to play Division cool. teams. You're only going to get better by playing these games early in the season. Uh, you're going to see some, some players who just pick up confidence when they have gr- uh, good performances. Uh, we saw the women's game in, in person. We weren't able to get in the men's game. Uh, on the women's side, uh, just... They, size and athleticism, a huge advantage for Providence College. So it wasn't the best game to judge how that team was going to be, but I did like what I saw from players like Cheyenne Jennings. Court Burns was great, obviously. Uh, Danielle LeBlanc, who I think might might be one of the best players on this team come midway through the year when she keeps picking up experience as a freshman. She was tenacious, played hard, was getting to the hoop. I mean, and she's not big. She's about, looks about five foot, unassuming, plays hard. I think she could be a difference maker throughout the season for this uh, for this Rhode Island College team. Kara Palladino played great, so or played solid. So this team looks good. Great I think wouldn't be a word I would use. Yeah, I don't for think. Anybody. Yeah, th- everyone looks solid, but again, size, athleticism. I mean, I think it was number twelve something Roberts for 
Yeah, yeah. Simone Robert. She was just quicker, faster, more agile and than anyone on the court. And then they had that other girl, Brianna quicker. Edwards, who just dropping yeah. layups. It, so I, I think this Rick women's team is going to be w- uh, new faces just about everywhere in the starting lineup. They're going to be pretty good this year. Th- they should contend for the Little East title. I think they contend. should contend. I I'm, I'm not. I'd pro- I, I, I think uh, they I they'll make the that. tournament, win their first round of the game. Make the NCAA I think they'll tournament. do exactly how they exactly did last year. Exactly how they did last yeah. year with four maybe, new maybe newcomers maybe. starting. Okay, um, let like me say this team. about the women's team: four newcomers starting. Very surprising. Yeah. Um, very two of them freshmen. Two, two, two freshmen two fresh transfers. Very interesting. Very very interesting. And then, um, but you know, they actually got six votes for the D three preseason. Uh, yeah. That's more than the men's team, which got two. On the men's side, led at the half. Led at the half against Providence College. Let me tell you, folks, I've been following Providence College for my whole life. They suckered me in when I was like six. They made the Elite Eight. Pete Gillen, Austin Crozier, God Sham God. Hashtag God Sham God. <laughs> so they suckered me in. I've been following them ever since. They've been awful ever since. They're going to be awful again this year, but next year is a possibility the team could, could make the NCAA tournament. They got a lot of transfers, a lot of hype coming in. Providence College, right? Okay. And then if they're uh, two freshmen, one of them's hurt, one of them taking his act together. If they can get in there, so by the way, Chris Dunn, the injured freshman, was a McDonald's All American last year. Do you know the last McDonald's All American to go to Providence College? Uh, no, not a God Sham God. Okay. Big recruit, nineteen ninety four to like Brooklyn. Okay. Isn't that great? That God is, Sham God. That is a great name. Unbelievable name. Uh, he left early to go pro, and he. Found his place later, but I'm throwing you under the bus. Um, so pro, uh, Rick, though, I think this team should make the NCAA tournament again. I mean, I think both will. They they got they got shooters on the outside, and they got some some guys low post presence. Yeah. I saw Chris Burton was in the starting lineup. You got some He's muscle great. on that guy. He's great. He could be a, the He's best great. best inside player in the conference. Jacob Page didn't play a whole lot last year. He was starting at the four. He's got some height on him. Good shooter too. Get some muscle Versatile. on these guys. Yeah, Burton. If Burton's bulked up, man, he could be a, an excellent player because he is yes. he, unbelievably he'll be, he'll be, athletic. He, he'll be uh, just knocking down people. He's, he could be one of the better point. players in the conference, I think, this year. Okay. Kara Willing, Kara Willington, also her first game. A new intensity, new fire at a head coach. Marcus Riley, a little more laid back, a little more chilled. Got his message across that way. Kara Willington, fired up, a little more energy. A little, I think that's a nice. little more feisty. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if looks could kill, she would have murdered someone after that game. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Like she looked not happy. Very. That's very all I'm funny. going with there. Okay. Is this Coach William said, "I love you." Yeah, this is our last topic. Okay. Wow, we only had ten topics 11. today. Eleven. So what we're gonna do here? Okay. MLS thought playoffs going on right now. Who you got? How did that San Jose Galaxy game? San Jose is up one nothing. I got San Jose win, and I'll San tell you Jose. why. Okay. I just Wando. Wando. I, I saw the the uh, MLS 36 on him on NBC Sports. Gotta love Wando. I mean, I thought he was not great because he had some chances with the U.S. team and sort of gagged a little bit. But now he's back. 27 goals this year. Got Alan Gordon. That guy can cross it. We saw him on the national team crossing it. Yeah. So they got a great little small stadium on the campus of Santa Clara University. Yep. Weird. Very, yeah. very weird. Not in San Jose. It's pretty awesome if you go to Santa Clara, though. Some people care, I'm sure. Some people probably don't care Something at all. Something to do on like a Tuesday night. They play Wednesday night, so I would yes. go to that. So I'm going to go San Jose coming out of the West. I wanted to say Sporting Kansas City. Uh, they were my favorite before, but they went down 2-0 to Houston. Yep. I think Houston's coming out of this Eastern Conference right now because the 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 Red, Red Bull New York, I call them Red Bull New York. Don't call them New York Red Bull. Red Bull New York, so okay. much cooler. Yep. They went one up. I like think Red Bull tied. Salzburg. Yes, that's exact same owner. Yep. DC United, those teams are just like a little iffy. I know Red Bull has a lot of stars, but I think Houston, they just have this playoff intensity yeah. about them. I like where their head's at right now. Actually, I'm going to go Houston. Houston over San Jose in the MLS Cup. Uh, you took you took my pick. I think Houston right now, Sorry. they look great. You get guys like Will, uh, Will Broom playing well, Moffitt with a great screamer goal, Brad Davis on set pieces, corners, free kicks. You swing them in. Probably the best in the MLS uh, off that left foot. Graham Ducey's pretty good as well. I'll give him credit there. Uh, but they have a huge 2-0 lead against Kansas City. It's going to be tough for Kansas City to come back in that one. I like L.A. out west. Robbie Keane, Landon Donovan, David Beckham, Mike McGee. It's a lot of talent. It's going to be tough. It's only a one nothing lead, one nothing aggregate lead right now for San Jose. So I I, have, I like uh, L.A. 
Seattle, I, I'm a Sounders fan. I just I think they have some great players up front. Eddie Johnson, Trey Montero are solid, but I think LA makes it to the finals game. Houston makes it as well. Taking the Dynamo. So we're both consensus there. Houston Dynamo is our team. Unfortunately, because they beat the Reds two years in a row yes. in a dramatic, terrible fashion. Yep. I was I was watching those games. I skipped NFL football those days. Saw the second. Off the move by MLS to put the MLS Cup yeah. versus the NFL. And then now they moved it to like the middle of the week. It's like a Wednesday at like eleven o'clock. There's so no you good. Pick a better time. I'll, I'll, I'm going to drop some knowledge on the MLS. There is no good time to schedule this MLS Cup final. You, last year it was a Sunday night. Now yep. it's a Wednesday night. No good time at all. Don't like. You can't go Saturdays. Yeah, well, you could. If Against you, the college football if slate, you, if you're you, not going to win there. There's four weeks left, so you'd have to push the season back. But if you could get in that break where the regular season ends and the bowls start, if you could get in that window, which I don't think they can, maybe that's, a that's Friday late. maybe a Friday night, maybe a Monday night prime time on NBC. Yeah, when, the middle of the week, though. I remember I stayed up the middle of the week to watch like the Colorado Rapids beat Dallas yeah, two years MC ago. Yeah, MC Dallas. That and was awful. Awful, awful, And the awful. guy the guy called the MVP by the wrong name. Uh, Casey Con- or Connor Casey called him Casey Connor. Connor Casey, Idiot. FIFA 2010. I've won the World Cup, I think, three times in the U.S. I'm obsessed with the game. Connor Casey came off the bench twice and scored the game-winning goal in the 90th minute both times. Super he's, sub. He's he was, pretty awful in those games. Wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he, he has like a 66 rating. 66 or 68. He balled. So we went 11 topics today. Elections Re- tomorrow. Remember to use the hashtag the Great Larry Bird jersey 33. 33. If you want to discuss on Twitter, hit us up at the warehouse, CH3 warehouse, at Danny A. Ferris. We're on Twitter all the time. Let us know. If you have a topic you want to throw up, give it to us. We'll discuss it. But that's it. Anyways, got to say thanks to Tom Lima. Pretty yeah, much Tom Lima. One man show one back, back there today. There. Camera, camera work, flipping through graphics was done by the warehouse, but he's got to control the graphics back there. Very nice job. Tune in to Anchor TV tomorrow for election coverage. Tune in Wednesday and Thursday for WXIN's Radio Thon. We'll be live uh, live streaming that all day, all night. So stay tuned. Big things coming from Anchor and then we TV got the, in the next the few days. The benefit party at the Rough Zone Thursday at 9. Where you pick? Ugh. Tip your waiters while you're there. See you later.